All right, guys, today I'm here on behalf of all lizards all around the world who are tired of being typecasted as just bed fishing baits. Now, granted, they've earned that reputation because they are an excellent way to trigger those territorial female bass during the spawn. However, these baits, when this water temp starts to heat up out of the winter, these fish are looking for big meals. And that's exactly what these lizards mimic. With the, all the appendages, the big tail, they really displace a lot of water. And that really allows these fish to hone in on them and, uh, and really think they're gonna feed up on a big bulky meal. So today we're using Strike King's Rage Lizard, which is part of the Rage Tail series. And we're gonna show you some different ways to rig this and try to entice some of these bigger pre-spawn fish that are looking to bulk up. All right guys, first we're talking about lizards. Uh, it's best to categorize, uh, categorize them as creature baits. Uh, when you say lizard, you get really caught up in uh, you know, certain types of the year and stuff, but really this is the original creature style bait. It's got five appendages, four legs and then that tail. And that's gonna be, this one's designed with that uh, Rage Tail series uh, um, uh, appendages. So those are gonna kick. So you're gonna get so much action out of this bait. Then uh, next, I'm gonna talk about two different ways to rig this thing today. Um, and this is basically uh, one on a Carolina rig and then one on a Texas rig that I'm gonna show you. I call this the poor man's Carolina rig because you can also, uh, with a split shot, adjust it to a Carolina rig so you can really switch back and forth. This is a great technique for you uh, pond fishermen that sometimes wanna do some flipping, some close quarter fishing, and sometimes wanna make some long casts and really drag this bait. All right, guys, there's two setups I really use uh, for that Carolina rig. Uh, first is I go with uh, about a 3 8 to 1 half ounce bullet weight. Um, then sometimes I'll add a bead if I'm fishing dingy water. So when that bead is banging up against the uh, weight, it'll make noise and uh, bring those fish in. Um, then I add a swivel to uh, um, reduce the line twist. Then is the leader. Um, I go anywhere from 18 inches to uh, you know, 36 inches. Uh, you know, I'll have three feet, depending on the bottom. If I've got uh, just hard gravel bottom, I'll just do a smaller leader, like 18 inches. But if I've got mud or a lot of grass or something like that, I'll go to a longer leader so that bait will stay up above that different uh, cover. Then I've got about a two to three aught wide gap worm hook, uh, and I rig that bait up weedless, and that's the first setup. All right, the second rig I kind of call the poor man's Carolina rig. And uh, this is actually great because you can adjust it to uh, you know be a Texas rig or all the way up to a Carolina rig. So all you do is start off with a bullet weight, just like your uh, you know, normal Carolina rig, except for you just have it uh, loose on the line and uh, same hook, two to three aught, wide gap worm hook, rig weedless, but, and this way you can throw this around cover, structure, whatever, but then when you need that Carolina rig, all you do is get your leader, you take a little split shot, crimp that onto the line, and now you've got poor man's Carolina rig. Um, this is good for when you're fishing from the shore, you can go back and forth from a nice little uh, Texas rig to flip and you know pick apart that different cover or make those long casts with that Carolina rig. All right, let me show you something really important to uh, take into consideration on your hook sets. So let's say this bait, I got about a three foot leader on this thing. So as this thing's banging along the bottom, let's say it's going that way, I'm dragging it down that way. Um, now, if, if a fish hits this bait, it's three feet behind that, that weight right now, okay? Now, if that fish swims forward, it can now go three feet in front towards where my hook set is. So basically, that's six feet of line that I've got to make up on that hook set. So that's why it's really important, if you get bit, you want to reel down with your rod tip down until you feel that, that rod load up, until you feel a little weight on that uh, rod, and then you make a big sweeping action because you need a long, a long hook set. You need to move that rod tip from as far as you can towards that fish, away from that fish, so you can really set, set that hook. Um, because uh, you might have to make up six feet of slack in that line. Hey, that was a good one. I better fill that. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice, dude. The good thing about these Carolina rigs is you can feel so much better because it doesn't have it, that fish doesn't feel that weight. Uh, this is a good fish. <laughs> yes. Yes, come here, baby. Oh, come here. Look at that stud. Are you kidding me? Look at the mouth on this. Wait till he stops flapping around. Wow. <laughs> 
And that's why you gotta really reel down on that fish, because you gotta reel down until you feel the weight of that fish. And when it loads up, then you set the hook, so you make sure you're actually getting a good hook set on this thing. Dude, look at that beast! We've got grass, that's why we've got about about two foot leader right there. So this bait's staying just above that grass and these fish are moving up into the shallows from their wintertime spots up into a little bit warmer, shallower flats. And uh, they're belly down in that grass just waiting for easy meals. Holy cow, look at that mouth, baby. All right, let's let you go, Suka. So you can see the seam that comes through here? Nice. That's, or you can see this, uh, you know, we've got this nasty rock bluff and then it kind of uh, flattens out into a little bit more of a shelf right there. That's a great spot, it's a transition area that these fish, they could be up on the top or they could be up on the deep side suspended. So we're casting straight down the seam and bringing this bait, banging around down there. All right, so retrieval. Guys, I'm, I'm making long casts. Uh, this bait, I'm using a half ounce weight. So this weight is really staying on the bottom. I can actually really move this quickly. So, uh, cause it really stays on the bottom. That bait's just kind of cruising along down there. It's just, it'll float down to the bottom as I pull it, kind of jumps up a little bit, then it comes back down. And so what I'm doing with that rod tip down, I'm just making little sweeps of the rod. Reel on the slack, make sweeps of the rod. Right now, I've got a little bit of wind pulling me, so I don't even have to really uh, do much with the rod. I can just have that rod tip down and feel that bait or feel that weight bouncing off the rocks. If I get snagged up on anything, I'll lift that rod tip up, shake it a little bit, and I'll come over the rock, then drop the rod tip and keep moving. So as I'm fishing along the sides of points or over island tops and things, I want to drag that Carolina rig. I can really keep that in contact with the bottom um, and get that real natural uh, kind of meander that that lizard does. When I come up into some heavier cover, like these brush piles and things, that's when I'm going to go to more of a Texas rig. So I've got that weight right up against the, uh, right up against the hook. And I'm just going to let this, I'm going to make little casts and pitches and stuff in between all this brush and just crawl this bait in and out of there. And I know as I'm doing that, as I'm coming over little brush piles and stuff, um, I'll feel my line get tight. And so right now it's tight, but once that bait comes over, so now it's in there. So I'll shake it, because I know it's weedless. So I'm gonna shake it a little bit until it pops free. There we go, pop free. Now I'm gonna let it fall back the other side. And this is gonna make commotion down there. This is gonna draw attention. And trust me, attention's a good thing this time of the year. These big fish, they're looking for meals. They're looking for something going on down there. And this little lizard's putting off so much action that it's gonna draw in some big, some big babies. Some big babies. So talking about location, uh, I really try to dumb it down. I want to focus on the, the easiest key, key areas in a lake. Um, that's main lake points, those big old points that come out. And then um, uh, any kind of island tops, uh, so stuff, you know, anytime that, that that contour really comes up high into, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet of water, I'm going to drag this over and around uh, spots like that. Um, and then creek channels. Um, I love, uh, depending on if it's early in the season, February or March, I'll start kind of deeper and work my way up a creek channel. But if it's a little late in the season, March, April, May, I'll start right up in the, uh, the shallow part of a creek, throw this way up in there, and then drag my way out and follow that creek channel out. Um, if you focus in on those key areas, you will eventually find some fish. And uh, if you find fish in an area on a creek channel, on a, uh, you know, in 20 feet on an island hump, then you want to note that and then repeat those as you move around the lake. Look for more situations like that. It's really about giving these fish what they want at the right time of the year. And a nice little profile, look at all those appendages. When we're coming out of the winter, water temps are warming up, these fish get really active. They do want a lot of movement. They want a lot of, a lot of wiggle wobble on these baits. And uh, you know, the little rage lizard from uh, Strike King is perfect for that. You've got so much action. It's a nice profile. It's a nice big bait. And that's what these fish want to eat. So guys, even though this is going to be a great bait as soon as those fish go on the beds, you want to be using this throughout the entire spawning time because you're going to be able to catch more fish. Uh, whether you're fishing in just a small pond or you're fishing these big lakes and reservoirs, you're going to catch fish with a creature bait like this little rage lizard. 
Guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel to get updates when we release new videos every week. And uh, to watch another one, hit one of the thumbnails on the page. Oh,